Hi, I'm Dave, and I know wrestling. Do you want a wrestler that couldn't get over even after beating Roman Reigns for the WWE title? Do you want a wrestler that couldn't even get over after playing Rocksteady in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie? And do you want a wrestler who finally got over by just aging into his role as a snug meathead? Then allow me to introduce to you my client for Dave Knows Wrestling's Honest Promos, the Celtic Warrior, Triple H's workout buddy, Captain Lou Albino, Stefan Farley, or Sheamus. Behold, the wrestler who followed in the proud tradition of both Kofi Kingston and John Cena of merely lingering around WWE long enough until audiences eventually accepted them as a main event player. But while Kofi at least organically did it by almost winning a gauntlet match after winning the WWE title, the world title, King of the Ring, Money in the Bank, the Royal Rumble, and beating Daniel Bryan in 18 seconds at WrestleMania, there really isn't a whole lot left for Sheamus to win in order to push him any further than he already has been. You see that, despite not being a great technical wrestler and being over overbooked for years, you can eventually gain audience approval if you last long enough. So in other words, there is still hope for you yet, Baron Corbin. Oh, and speaking of how much Stefan was forced on fans in the beginning, there were rumors that he only got to where he did because he was Triple H's workout buddy. Even though Stefan was already working in the European indie scene way before he ever got to WWE. I guess Hunter really likes a long commute for getting a swole on. Or maybe, just maybe, Sheamus was really hired by WWE in order to justify all the worst options in the creative wrestler sweep to prove that a real person really can look like this much of a cartoon. In all actuality, it was really Bret Hart who suggested that Stefan receive training at the Monster Factory. Too bad while he was there he never learned how to legit fight, as in real life he got whooped by both Sin Cara and Yoshitatsu. Is it any wonder that nobody takes him seriously as a tough guy? Then again, no one really buys him as a joke either. Do you remember all those lame comedy skits they did with him? Like the one with David Otunga and the 1-800-FELLA bit, where you were supposed to call the number if you needed Stefan to kick something. The latter of which might just have been WWE's attempt to more strongly associate him with the bro kick rather than the Irish curse, since that's a penis reference that I'm pretty sure doesn't go over in the PG era. Ah, uh, but forget about back then, because Stefan has found success playing somewhere in the middle ground between silly and serious with the brawling brutes, because I'm not really sure if they're supposed to be greedy and dangerous, or if this is supposed to be one big gag as they're all cosplaying as newsies. Although, it really doesn't matter. The important thing is that Stefan has finally found his groove, which is even more impressive considering that just a few years ago, it was rumored that he might be forced into retirement. Even though nobody cared. Anyway, clearly all those rumors were false, as Stefan is on his best run right now. And he didn't have to do it by improving his work rate, learning a whole bunch of moves, or even getting better on the microphone. Instead, he did it just by standing next to Gunther until all of his overness rubbed off on him. It was the same strategy he tried with Cesaro. In the end, if you want a wrestler who Jeff Hardy threw his urine on, a wrestler who was eliminated by Bad Bunny and the Royal Rumble, and a wrestler who's the bushwhacker Luke to Pete Dunne's butch, then allow me to introduce to you my client for Dave Knows Wrestling's Honest Promos, Stefan Urkeltic, Botch Steady, The Stiff Punch Marshmallow Man, Stefan Farley, or Sheamus. So, before he got his mohawk, and before he received training, and before he got his new name, Stefan worked as an IT technician. Does that make him Hawk from Cobra Kai? 